Hi, welcome back to the Geef Music Synth and Tech channel. Today I'm joined again by Jack Dury from Shaw. Today we're going to be talking about wireless frequencies so you can better understand them. But before we get into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So Jack, I know with wireless frequencies, they run on a frequency band like 606 megahertz. But what do those numbers really mean? Okay. So we're talking about the wireless spectrum at this point, which sounds kind of complicated, but it's actually really simple. We experience spectrum every single day. So you're listening to me at the moment because you can hear me in the audio spectrum, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and I am modulating my face to carry information. It's going into your ears and you're able to perceive it. If we go a bit higher in terms of the numbers, we end up in the visible light spectrum, yeah? So we're through all the colors of the rainbow up to ultraviolet light. And like this TV behind us, for example, is taking all of those frequencies, all of those wavelengths in the visible light spectrum and manipulating them and modulating them to convey information to our eyes that we can understand. The UHF spectrum is no different. The science is pretty much exactly the same, uh, but it's just that it's beyond the perception of human hearing and seeing. So the really good thing about that is we can do any kind of wireless communication we want using this spectrum. So other devices, you know, any device in your life that does wireless communication, like a mobile phone, for example, Wi-Fi routers, baby monitors, taxi cabs, all that sort of stuff, will use the wireless spectrum, the UHF spectrum, in order to communicate communicate that information in, in some way. Mm -hmm. And we need to divide that up. And the way, the, the unit of measurement that we always use for these things is hertz, right? So you think about 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, that's an audio term that most of us, I think, will understand. This is just the same, but now we're in megahertz, yeah. right? So classically, we're kind of looking at the 400 to 700 megahertz range to put our wireless stuff in. That gives you an idea of where it sits. That's the licensable space that we have for wireless systems of this type. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can give you an example here. So we've got a transmitter. This is set to 610 megahertz. And if I spark this on, we can see the UHF spectrum behind me and I get my carrier pop up at 610 megahertz down here. So that's all that that figure is giving you. It's saying which specific frequency does this work in? And as we saw in the video that we've recorded earlier, when I modulate that frequency, when I take that 610 megahertz and apply some audio to it, it's going to move around. So it's yeah. going to deviate from that center frequency in order to carry information. Great, so say I was running uh, two systems at once. Uh, what do I need to look out for to make sure I don't get any interference or anything like that? Yeah, good question. There's two things I need to watch out for. The first is kind of other devices. So this is kind of on its own at the moment. It's quite happy. If I was going to put a second frequency into this system, mm -hmm. I obviously, you look at how wide this is deviating, this, this you know, center frequency here. If I had my next frequency directly next to it, at some points it's going to deviate so far that it's going to interfere with that second frequency. And then I'll have what we call a channel to channel conflict. So that's two channels that are too close to each other, just literally crossing over each other and not able to, to, to generate a nice, healthy modulation that our receiver can see. Yeah, so like obviously now we're on 610, but yeah. if we were on 609.9, that's too close. Too close, way, way too close, absolutely. So the first is some distance between our other channels. So I've got a second transmitter here, which I can spark on, and I've put this at a healthy distance. This is at 610.500. So, you know, a good kind of mega way, which is where we want to be. These two can now kind of exist quite happily. They can modulate quite happily. But then this brings us to the second thing that we need to bear in mind, which is what happens when these two physical pieces of hardware start to interact with each other. So when there's some distance, we don't really have a problem. But when they physically come close to each other, as we can see here, the spectrum starts to go a bit mad. Yeah. So this is like harmonic interference. In, in our world, this is called intermodulation. The reason why it occurs is these both have antennas. The antennas are dumb pieces of equipment. They don't really know what their purpose in life is. Yeah. Uh, and they will act as a receiving and a transmitting antenna. So they're both transmitting at the moment, but when they kind of come close to each other, this antenna says, oh, there's some frequency here that I can yes. kind of deal with. I want to receive it. And it goes through the antenna circuitry and some maths occurs, which gives us this phenomenon. Yeah. It's important to bear in mind because obviously this is a complete mess. Mm -hmm. But if I had my next frequency here, which was my like lead vocal, for example, obviously when this happens, that's going to go off air because the noise floor increase, increases quite dramatically and we now can't use that RF anymore. Yeah, this is going to completely cut it out and you won't be able to hear that vocal. Absolutely. And this brings us into this concept of a frequency coordination. Mm -hmm. There are two ways to do a frequency coordination. 
information. The first is using groups and channels. So I've got my BLX device here. If we look on the front of this, you will see an option for groups and an option for channels. And the key thing here is you want to use one group for all of the wireless systems in your ecosystem, yeah? So you want to use group one, and then the first device is going to be channel one, second device is going to be channel two, yes. third device is going to be channel three. That's maths that Shaw has done and mm -hmm. put into this box that says, all of those channels are far enough apart they'll work. And they are also in a kind of coordination that means when this intermodulation thing occurs, it's not going to take any of the channels out that are in that group. So I see a lot of uh, wireless systems always talk about having more groups and more channels and stuff like that. Is that to do with the, the frequency space just to make sure that you're not getting that interference and nothing bad's going to happen when you're performing? Absolutely. So as, as you go up the portfolio to like SLXD and QLXD, these are more agile devices, which means that we can kind of fit them closer together and we don't have to worry so much about the intermod thing. That will mean that you get more channels in a group. Yeah. So it's a really easy way of kind of seeing that portfolio through. So if you are going to regularly be using 10 to 15 devices, or you're hoping to eventually get to that point, it's worth buying in at like a premium system now. Mm -hmm. So like an SLXD now, because that will really future-proof you and allow to grow that system and, and get to where it needs to be. BLX is great, but you can't do a huge amount with it once you want to exceed those sort of channel counts. You're kind of stuck in, in, the, in the BLX ecosystem that we give you. Uh, so you mentioned about kind of the higher end of the wireless systems. I know sure have QLXD. So say, for example, I was running, like we have here, four QLXD systems at once. How do I kind of manage that? And how do I look after the, the RF spectrum that's there? And because I don't want to be going into the dials on the front, because mm -hmm. that might be a bit time consuming. I just want to plug it in and play and, and get ready. What's the best way to do that? Great question. So there's a basic and an advanced way to do this. You kind of alluded to the basic way, mm -hmm. and it's actually quite acceptable. The basic way is to literally go into the, the hardware of the device. Again, use groups and channels. So for this, for example, I would use group one and then channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. Yeah. If you take nothing else away from this video, it is make sure the group is the same. Yeah. And this is a mistake that I see a lot. So people just go like group one, group two, group three, group four. You are not in a coordinated workspace at that point. You're using four different groups that aren't designed to work together. Mm -hmm. So keep it all in one group. That's true for any wireless system out on the market, by the way, not just your systems. That's the basic way. But we can do something slightly more advanced. Shaw has a piece of software called Wireless Workbench. This is a free piece of software to download, uh, and it will allow you to work with any Shaw device SLXD upwards, mm -hmm. and you can take remote control of it and do some pretty advanced frequency coordinations. So the scenario that I want to give you is we just want to do a really basic channel 38 coordination. Yeah. I think we're going to talk in some subsequent videos about how we license stuff. So do watch that if you want to understand what channel 38 is. But the short version of it is it's a piece of spectrum where you will only ever find wireless equipment. You won't find any TV, mobile phones, anything like that in there. So we want to do a really quick channel 38 coordination. Uh, we're going to blast through this super fast. If you see this and you're interested in it, we've got a ton of videos on our performance and production YouTube page at Shaw mm -hmm. of how wireless workbench functions. We also do some quite in-depth training on it. But just okay. for the purpose of this, I'll show you how quick and easy it can be. Mm -hmm. So this is what Wireless Workbench looks like. Yeah. Uh, if I go into my inventory tab here, I can see all my QLXD, which are networked together. If I flash these devices in Workbench, the hardware will flash to show that I've got a, um, a connection here. Okay. I can name these devices really quickly. So let's just give them a channel name. We'll say channel. I'm going to auto enumerate from one. And we can see now that all these devices are going to count up from channel one to channel four. That will be reflected in the hardware. Our frequency coordination. So I've got a frequency coordination tab here. The most exciting thing that we can do to start off with is actually perform a scan. Mm -hmm. So that kind of graph that we saw earlier in, in the previous um, desktop, this one here, yeah. is a live version of the UHF spectrum that my laptop is looking into. But really, to do a good frequency coordination, I want to get my hardware to look at this. So I'm going to use my QLXD to do a little scan. There we go. And what it's going to do is literally look at the spectrum that QLXD can see. Yeah. And it's just going to give me a snapshot here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for this to populate uh, of the UHF spectrum that's live in the room. OK. Might be worth just pausing for a moment here <laughs> to allow this scan to complete. Cool. And we're back and we've got that uh, frequency spectrum up on there. So what does all this uh, stuff mean? 
Right, so this is just a snapshot of, of as we said earlier, this little graphic here. Yeah. So this is a snapshot in time of what we've got. Uh, this little squiggle line on the bottom is just a noise floor. Yeah. So that's going to be built up of like my laptop and the telly, just stuff generating electromagnetic interference. We have got some interesting things here. I reckon these are definitely wireless channels of some sort, these little peaks. Uh, we've established they're not the wireless channels that are in here, which mm -hmm. suggests that somebody else on the estate is doing some wireless stuff. Could be in the, the showroom, for example, or something like that. It could like be that. something like walkie-talkies, right? Could, like potentially, that. yeah. It could also be something along those lines. We'd want to go and find out what these were if we were doing this proper frequency coordination. And again, just a really, really quick snapshot. If I want to do four channels of this, based on the spectrum that I can see here, I'm going to put my software into a mode that just looks at channel 38. Mm -hmm. There we go. So that's highlighted now. And I can bring my uh, QLXD devices in. Uh, and then it's just simply a question of hit and calculate, and it's going to find me four frequencies that it thinks are good. Okay. What's interesting about this is if I hit calculate again, it will find me four completely different frequencies. Oh, interesting. Which means that there is never one answer mm. to what your frequency coordination is. There's going to be multiple answers. Um, but once we've got that, I can then just assign and deploy this coordination out to my hardware, and that's it. My QLXD will flash, and I have a coordination ready to go. Okay, so then that's set up now on the QLXD system, and that's picked basically the best frequency possible to make sure you don't get any interference or any dropouts. And importantly, I've done a scan. So I've actually shown QLXD what's going on. If yeah. I'm using groups and channels, it's just doing some, you know, yeah. kind of basic maths that, but it hasn't got any information about what the wider spectrum is. So yeah, using kind of... software like Workbench really mm. allows you to delve in and get good coordinations. Yeah, otherwise you're just kind of guessing, right? B completely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Amazing, thank you so much for that. I think I better understand the wireless frequencies and how they work. So what would be your kind of just quickly top tips for frequency managing? Uh, always use groups and channels um, and make sure that you're using one group and, and many channels within that group. If you're using multiple groups, you have not got a coordinated space. Um, definitely think about your frequency coordination. Again, don't think about it too much. Don't stress about it. You just want to get on stage and perform. But if you don't manage this stuff correctly, even if you've got the most expensive wireless system in the world, it's probably not going to work for you so well. Um, yeah, and I think that's it when it comes to frequency coordination. Just do a good one. Do think about it, but don't worry too much about it. Amazing. So if you have any extra questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And yeah, thank you for watching. And make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll see you later. Bye.